Real quick, man, I gotta do this because this channel has never had sponsors. I've always sponsored myself. First off, this first company, Toon45, we focus on building innovative products and education to help elevate the industry. If you want some dope products, some dope barbering products, hairstyling products, technology, tools to help your business, go to Toon45.com. And then this company, Pi County, this is the most innovative financial service in our industry. It's a, a, a accounting firm with a full suite of services that focuses on the barber and beauty industry. We'll help you with your taxes, with tax strategy, filing your taxes, we'll help you with a budget, we'll help you build your credit and repair your credit, education every single week, all for one low monthly fee. And trust me, accounting services should be your priority and it's never cheap. So with that being said, we'll start this video. I got a package from Babyliss. I got a feeling they've already sent me whatever's in here, but let's see if it's something new, something unique. I might not even be supposed to be showing this, but let's see. Okay, yeah, I got, so I already got these. I already got these, but I appreciate Babyliss. These are supposed to be a lot better. Shannon, you already used these, right? How you liking them? Oh, are they there already? You have them still? All right, you can have those, bro. Oh yeah, way better, uh, way better switch. Extended? I think it might be extended. It looks like it opens up more. That's what uh, Sean said. All right, well, there you go. Thank you, Babelis. appreciate it. I have no clue what this box is. It was here, it's got my name on it. No clue what's in here. What the hell is this? What's crazy is I don't even know what company this is. But shout out to Sin Sinodi for the gift. Oh, they're not playing. Dale's Pale Ale. Oh, I'm gonna drink these tonight. Not 100% sure why I got this gift, but I will take it. I do like IPAs. Zenodi for the gift, thank you. Here's another thing we got in. The, the Babyless Pro Barbersonic. I bought some Barbersonic, I don't know where, where I put it. Oh, it's back there. It's not as big as I thought it was in like pictures and videos. There you go, so I guess you plug it in, put your guards in here. Oh, it's already, it's numbered too. You can put all your, your half here, your one. This will help you keep organized too. That's put, clean. put your combs here, and then when you close it, you know, it should start cleaning your guards and shit. Oh, it don't have the butt, it's just the USB. Dang. I guess when you close it, it probably turns on by itself. Oh, maybe it's charged, it's chargeable. Yeah, so it has a battery, and I guess you just charge it. So this is a switch to turn it on, so it's waterproof. I don't think it's charged though, I think it's dead. Oh, there's no batteries. Oh, so you can do battery or plug it in. I think it's the, the plug that comes with a little, little bit short, and it don't have the butt, but. The only thing I don't like about it is it's not rechargeable, only thing. But cool ass technology, and I'm. This is one dot up. Should it get better over time? We gotta plug it in and see how it works. All right, you guys. They got the barber side in there. You gotta hit the switch for it to start cleaning. That's dope. But that thing, it vibrates strong. I'm pretty sure it, it probably cleans the hell out of your guards. I ain't gonna lie. All right, we're gonna start vlogging some more. Penny, is that okay? Can we start vlogging some more? You good with that, baby? We can, we can start vlogging. Penny just got done drinking a bunch of water. So I'm running ads right now for Amazon because I'm trying to have the number one selling clay in all of Amazon. That would be a dream come true for me. We're gaining a lot of traction with the powder. I started running ads on the on this one. That way we can at least try to get some more sales. Hopefully people will write some reviews and improve that 4.1. So running ads for the powders, running ads for the clay. We're gonna try to make those two products top selling hairstyling products. Because if we can make that happen, along with distribution, along with our Shopify store and the sales that those generate, then we can get a little bit deeper into hairstyling products and try to bring our innovative, you know, masa into the hairstyling world. That's the goal anyways, we'll see if we can make it happen. Um, that's what I've been working on all morning. All right, today we, we my boy got a football game, flag football. And of course, there's my daughter. Elijah, what are we doing? Why are we out here? We gotta practice. Try to work on your routes, about to work on your game. The, with the nephew, and then you got people, grown people, flying some kites. I'm gonna put in some work. <laughs> what the? I'm gonna... What was that? He Puerto Rican. Right He's there. used to throwing a baseball. Uh, all right, y'all, we're going to the movie theaters to see Air, the Nike story. One of my favorite books of all time is uh, Shoe Dog, the story of Nike. But now I feel like I got to change my shoes. I can't show up to the movie theaters rocking these, right? If we're going to go watch Air. Where are you wearing? I don't know. I got mine now. Oh, okay. You made up for me. We Gucci then. Let's go. Looking forward to this movie. If I like it enough, I might go watch it again. Bring my boy with it. With my little entrepreneur right here. Future boss right here. So there's a movie theater here. They revamped a bunch of it. Except that. How do you choose? The ones you save. Food looks crazy. 669 All right, we got some more clippers, Elijah. The big box. Stuff to the top. 
one? Damn, I already have a pair of these. That's crazy. Hey, but look at this. Now, this is OD. Like, they went crazy with the... Just this little brochure had to have been five bucks. It went crazy. That's crazy. Whoa. These are gorgeous. Literally gorgeous. Literally gorgeous. What you think? I like it. If you guys know, I don't do a lot of giveaways. I give them to my barbers who also make videos. And then they make videos out of them. They keep them. Might be doing a giveaway soon. Shout out to Babyless for always showing love. Sending your boy some products. You the fire, right? Happy birthday, dear Justine. Happy birthday to you. What's up, guys? Um, all right, so I really wanted to talk about this because, you know, I recently got some messages and I, and I think you guys, you know, some of you guys really need to hear something like this because um, I wish somebody would, would have said this to me early in my life. I was reading this book and in the book, um, I think the book is called uh, Psychology of Money. And um, it's not just about money. It's about money, it's about choices. It's about health and happiness. And I don't have this idea that money isn't everything. That don't ever come out of my mouth. You know, that goes without saying. Of course, money isn't everything. There's so much in life, right? But the one thing we can't ignore is that it is a problem. It is a cause of stress for the majority of people in this world. That is something that is within our control. If you don't believe it is, then you're probably never going to achieve a solution for it. To me, it's, it's more than beyond your control or more than within your control. If you can fix that, if you can spend some time fixing that, then that's one less thing to worry about because it is the biggest cause for stress in this world, I believe, or at least in, in, this, in this country. In the book, the author says, you can see rich, you can't see wealth. It makes total sense to me. You know, the book talks about how you can't buy the things that you see rich people have unless you're rich. You know, some of the, the examples he's talking about is a nice car, is a nice house, you know, that type of thing. And he's right. Especially in 2023, maybe in the past it's not true, but in 2023, you want to go buy a house. You're not buying a big house unless you, you go through some type of underwriting. They're going to check your bank statements. They're going to check your tax returns. They're going to check your debt. They're going to make sure that you are capable of purchasing and affording a large home. It's a little bit easier with the lower cost homes, but if you're buying something over, over the max allowable that a FHA give you a loan on or even a conventional then you're going to be you got to put bigger down payments you know you're not just buying a million dollar house and being able to take a five percent loan on a million dollar house you got to do a jumbo loan if you don't have money to, to put down it takes real income a high income a really high income and able to in order to be able to buy a, a big house if you want to buy a car that's a hundred thousand dollars or more you have to have real high income and low debt in order to do that so to, statistically speaking, an individual who can buy a $100,000 car or better, a big house, the traditional way, you got to be rich. Now, there's a bunch of finesse guys over there. There's people who lease expensive cars from rich people who can actually get approved for them. There's rappers and celebrities who lease homes. We, we've seen people we've seen people get caught a bunch of times acting like an Airbnb is their house. <laughs> Those are people who are faking it, right? But the people who are actually buying these things traditionally, they're rich. Doesn't mean they're financially stable and it doesn't mean they're financially free. I'll give you an example. There's doctors that are swimming in debt, drowning in debt, I should say, earn 300,000 a year. Got a nice car, got a nice house. But if a recession was to hit, if anything catastrophic happened in their family, they'd be in bankruptcy. They're rich, but they're not financially stable at all. And then there's people who are financially free, and then I think the next step is wealthy. Financial freedom to me is not just do your assets and your passive income cover your bills because that's not free. You don't have options. In order to acquire that, I think you need to create a budget. And this is what we do in the mentorship. Create a budget that will pay for a humble lifestyle. One that's happy. I'm not telling you to eat ramen noodles every day. One that's happy. So for me, when I was, when I was trying to get to financial freedom, between me, my wife, and my two kids, we needed about 6000 a month in order to afford our lifestyle. It was a humble one. Two paid off cars, older cars, 10 years old or older, 2000 a month in rent, four bedroom house. Now that four bedroom house is like 3500 a month. Like I said, two paid off cars, so we had insurance, groceries, that type of thing. Needed about six grand, 72000 a year. When I make enough passive income, now passive income is money that you make that isn't directly related to the time you spent making it. So it's not another job. It is, you bought a business, you bought real estate, you have some type of revenue driver 
that makes money whether you're there or not. Now you still gotta manage it. It still takes some time. I don't think passive income, 100% passive income is, is, is real. But nonetheless, once you have a budget, you should be focusing on getting rich, which is a very high income individual. You know, depending on where, where you live, that could be 150K, that could, you know, in California, in, in San Francisco, LA, that's not rich. Rich in over there is like 400K, 450K, right? Here in Tampa, it's probably 250K. So once you're there, now you're rich, okay? But we've already identified I needed 72,000 a year to afford my lifestyle. I get to that 250K here in Florida. Am I gonna go buy a Mercedes, a big house, anything like that? No, that's how you stay financially unstable your whole life, where most Americans are. What you do now is you continue to live that $72,000 lifestyle while you're making 250K, take the margin and start investing it. Save it, invest it into assets that are gonna produce passive income. When that passive income matches the 72,000 you need to be able to, to afford your lifestyle and pay your basic needs, now, in my opinion, you're financially stable. So if you're making 250,000, you're financially stable. That means your passive income is covering your bills. You can save 250,000 a year if you keep the same lifestyle. Now you're human. Let's say your your income goes for, your lifestyle goes from 72,000. If you're at 250, you're happy. Your mom, your wife got a new car. Your family's happy. You guys have upgraded. You're only at 100,000 a year lifestyle, but you still make 250. You got 150k. Now obviously I haven't this is basic math. You got to worry about taxes all that stuff. But let's just do simple math for so that just bear with me. So let's say you got now you you know you're at 100k lifestyle because you couldn't stay at 72 because you're human. You still got 150k a year, guys, to save and invest. So if you continue this cycle and you save and invest, your passive income pays for your basic needs and replaces your active income. This is where people would stop working or they'd go pull out the Mercedes. Don't do it. Wealth is what people can't see. Rich is what people can see. If you care that much about what people think, it's gonna be hard for you to get wealthy, guys. Some of the most humble people in the world are wealthy because they had to live a life that most people wouldn't live, even at $50,000 a year income, that people wouldn't, most people wouldn't live in order to get to wealth. So now you're making, again, you're making that 250K in passive income. Some people would quit their jobs and that's okay. There's nothing bad about that. Like you, you've earned it. You're in a place where most people don't achieve. You're financially free. And that's that's very commendable. But if you wanna build wealth, stay on that $100,000 lifestyle. Now you have 250K in passive income, minus the $100,000 lifestyle, you're left with 150. But keep working, keep working. And let's say you're not working full, full time. Let's say you go from working 40 hours, making that 250K a year, 20 to 30 hours. Now you're making 175. So that 175 plus 100K that's left from your lifestyle or that 150K that's left from your lifestyle, guys, that's 270,000 a year that you can save and invest. You see how this starts to compound? It's tough in the beginning. I get it. It's hard. I've been there, bro. I've been on every government assistant, WIC, housing, food stamps, Amscot payday advances every two weeks. Like I've been there. It is hard in the beginning. But if you stay focused and disciplined, it starts to compound. It starts to snowball. And now you're in a situation where you're able to save and invest 250 grand or 275 grand. Do you know the type of wealth you can build if you just delay gratification? If you just don't care about what people think, don't look rich. Don't go after rich. Go after wealth. That 250K, guys, that's a million dollar property every single year that's going to cash flow for you. You can build barber schools. You can buy barber schools. You can buy brands. You can buy shit. You can buy assets. Now you're in a whole different realm. You've opened up doors and opportunities for yourself you wouldn't believe, guys. Not just that, but the wisdom, the growth here, the discipline that you've, you've acquired by reaching this level, you'll be a totally different person, a whole different person in a good way. You'll be the type of person that can pour into people, not just not just with resources and, f and financially, but here. You'll be better for your community, better for your so for society. And now you're, you're putting yourself in the positions where you're wealthy. You know, the Rockefeller family, they're not where they're at today just because they passed generations of wealth, of money to generations after them. They're also rich because they passed this on. The information, the knowledge, some people have to take over 
the reins. To me, it's no different than my father being born in Colombia, poor as hell, moving to this country, poor as hell. And then when I'm born, I start here in a better school with more money, with a house with hot water and AC. I got a better start. My kids, they don't know any better. They, they, they see their parents building businesses. They see their parents leading and, and helping inspire people. They think that's normal in their life. They're emulating that. When they're in school, when they're playing sports, they're emulating that. You're not just passing the wealth finances on, but the wisdom, the discipline, the character that it took to get to wealth. Because I, to I showed you guys, I told you guys the, the blueprint, what it looks like from a macro view. You don't get there by accident. If you get there by luck or by accident, it goes away quickly. Lottery winners, athletes, you see it all the time, guys. They got the money before they got the wisdom, the discipline, the information, and they built their character to be a person who can handle that type of wealth. Rich is what you can see. Wealth is what you cannot. There are people who are rich, but they're financially unstable. So the first thing you gotta do is get a budget of your basic needs and create that lifestyle. And don't let it creep, lifestyle creep. Where every time you get a raise, you make more money, your lifestyle matches it. Don't do that. Keep your basic needs, your budget in mind. Don't go up more than 10%, 20% max if you, if you have a hell of a year. But you gotta keep that lifestyle you got to keep it humble for as long as possible. Delay gratification. So once you have your budget in place, now it's time to get rich. Rich to me is a high income, a high income earner. And it's relative to where you, the marketplace you're in. So step one is budget, then get rich. Focus on your income. That means focusing on your business and making revenues, making money. Once you do that, it's time to get financially stable. Once you've done that, it's time to get financially free. Once you're financially free, it's time to build wealth. To me, that's the order. That's what we teach in the mentorship. That's where we're trying to help people in Pi accounting obtain, but you gotta have the income first. And that's why we tell people, you gotta make at least 3,500 a month before you get started. That number is because we know you're gonna make more money. You're gonna get a better return on your investment had you not signed up for Pi accounting. If you were self-employed, you just went to a tax, a h and block or something like that, you're gonna lose money no matter how cheap they are going that option if you make 3,500 or better. But Pi accounting is gonna help you along the way as you're create, um, growing your income come getting rich we're going to help you secure a budget repair your credit get you prepared for when it's time to get financially stable once we help you get financially stable then we're going to help you get financial freedom once you get financial freedom it's up to you to decide how disciplined you're going to be whether or not you want wealth and it's like i said it's okay to stay financially free not everybody wants to get wealthy i get it but we can help you get wealthy as well and so those are the steps don't be the, the 21 year old, the 22 year old, the 23 year old, the 25 year old, the 30 year old that finally hits six figures, that finally gets to a, a high income and now you wanna look rich. Most people are impressed by that. Most people don't build wealth. Stop doing things to impress most people. You finessing your way out of doing what most people can't do in their lives. You got one life. Cool, that's it for, the, for today guys.